this is a hydrogel and so is this 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 and this hydrogels are 3d networks of polymer chains that are made up of repeating units called monomers these polymers are hydrophilic which allows the material to swell in water and for this to become this hydrogels were the first biomaterial developed for human use and their unique properties allow them to be engineered to suit a wide variety of medical needs, from tissue engineering to drug delivery. Not all hydrogels are made of the same general components. Monomers, initiators, cross-linkers, and water, which acts as a medium for them all. Monomers are linked together into polymers by initiators, and polymer chains are linked together by cross-linkers. The hydrogel is structured similar to a fishing net with the ropes representing the polymer chains and the knots representing the cross links. These gaps allow the hydrogel to hold a lot of water. Hydrogel cross links can be physical or chemical. Physical cross links are weaker, meaning that these hydrogels reversibly bind based on their environment. Think about how jelly becomes a liquid again when you reheat it. Chemical cross links, on the other hand, are irreversible and these form permanent hydrogels. Hydrogels can also be natural, like gelatin or synthetic. They can have a structured arrangement or a random one. All of this can lead to different chemical and mechanical properties, which we can tune for a desired application. When a researcher wants to develop a hydrogel for a specific application, they need to consider what properties they need and how these can be synthesized. Some of the major considerations might be biocompatibility, biodegradability, mechanical strength, swellability, and stimuli sensitivity. As an example, this past summer, I was working on creating hydrogel micromolds for the purposes of growing muscle cells for lab-grown meats. Here we were investigating how stiffness and topography can affect how cells grow, and we were considering things like biodegradability, or otherwise making our molds edible. <coughs> Regenerative medicine is an exciting opportunity for hydrogels, in particular for MAP hydrogels, which were developed by Dr. Tatiana Segura and Dr. Dino De Carlo. MAP hydrogels stand for microporous annealed particles and basically refers to a bunch of microscopic hydrogel balls that are stuck together, which creates a network of tiny pores in between them. Unlike traditional bulk hydrogels, this granular structure of MAP allows for unique properties such as porosity, injectability, and heterogeneity. Porosity allows cells to infiltrate the hydrogel as opposed to remaining on the surface. Injectability allows for targeted delivery. And heterogeneity allows for size, shape, stiffness, and more to be varied all within one material. These properties allow MAP hydrogels to mimic the extracellular matrix that supports the cells in our bodies. MAP can be loaded with drugs or stem cells and injected into a wound to support healing. This biomaterial has already been shown to improve bone regeneration and even brain repair following a stroke in animal models. This is just one of many interesting applications and I look forward to seeing what comes next for the hydrogel.